We are back live. We're here Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. What is that? 10 to 1 Mountain, uh, 9 to noon Pacific. Other times, Greenwich Mean, Imperial Gallic, whatever you wish. Going back to Stefan Molyneux, we'll give you his website and things in a moment. And go to your phone calls, the toll-free number to join us on any subject. Because uh, our guest is just like I am, studying the news and history. He can, he can speak to it from his own perspective. 800-259-9231. Going back to Stefan Molyneux. Stefan, tell us about uh, your website and how people uh, can visit that. Sure. It's at freedomainradio.com. Uh, it is the biggest philosophy conversation in history. But, of course, that's mostly just because of the new technology. And, yeah, we've had, like, almost 35 million downloads and video views and uh, 10,000 board members. And so it's a really thriving community of people very interested in philosophy. So I hope to check it out. I got tons of free books up there. I just released one called uh, The Handbook of Human Ownership, a manual for new tax farmers, which is a tongue-in-cheek, humorous instruction manual for new politicians on how to rule the herd. So yeah, yeah. briefly break down uh, 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 the tax farmer system for folks that aren't familiar with that. Sure. Well, you know, you look at a map of the world and you see these geographical regions in different colors with labels. And a lot of people think that it's about culture and a lot of people think it's about nationalism. But the reality is that all of the countries that you see on a map are actually just tax farms. And they are very modern tax farms where we are no longer assigned to our occupations like serfs. We're no longer owned directly like slaves. We're no longer eaten directly like the old style cannibalism of the Stone Age. Now we're allowed to choose our own occupations, which makes us more productive, which means that we can generate more money and wealth for our owners. The problem is, of course, that uh, democracy can't work without massive bribery of the population. It's as true now as it was in ancient Greece, as it was in ancient Rome. And that creates the collectivism and then destroys the human species, turning us into lazy, servile blobs. Well, I hope that we're not going to get to a destruction of the human species. It certainly does destroy the economy in the long run. I mean, you, you can't have a democracy without debt because you have to bribe people, right? So the baby boomers who got 3 to $4 in services for every dollar they paid in taxes thought it was the best system ever. Look at this. We've got all this uh, free health care. We've got all this free stuff. And it's wonderful and it's great. The problem is, of course, as Margaret Thatcher famously said, the problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money to burn. Well, it's and two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. What happens after the wolves have eaten all the sheep and eaten the sheep a uh, herder? You know, that's my issue for you. I see at the Bilderberg Group and things, a lot of big libertarians like the head of the PayPal Mafia <coughs> and others, you know, these multi-billionaires, they're pushing libertarian philosophy but in the end game, now that through crony non-free market systems, they've consolidated control, now they're pushing austerity and cutting off resources, uh, now that people are dependent, as libertarian or you know, oh, yeah. uh, uh, anarchic capitalism. But then they're always scapegoating the, the, the unfeasibility of the ongoing welfare state, ignoring the banker bailouts, ignoring... Uh, the fiat money system that was designed to be impossible to pay back and convert us from the greatest creditor nation to the greatest debtor nation, the same for the, you know, every other nation. So, 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 I mean, certainly you've seen in the whole globalist hive Borg, they're now putting some libertarian camouflage uh, on top of their backs uh, a bit. Well, I'll tell you, Alex, you know the system is about to crash when libertarians are invited to run the show. Because that way, when the whole thing goes up in flames, everybody will remember, hey, who was in charge when it all crashed? Those crazy libertarians. And they'll just discredit freedom for another thousand years. So my strong, strong advice is, hey, you know, support Ron Paul if you think he's a good educator, and I think he is. But for heaven's sakes, libertarians and anarchists do not go near anywhere this Titanic because it already hit the iceberg and you do not want to be anywhere near political power when the giant sucking sound of imploding fiat currencies and collapsing economies is heard around the world, you want to make sure that all of the idiots who made this mess are in charge when it goes down. So I know there's a great temptation to get in there and try and fix it. It's way too late. It was too late with the great society. That, that's the seal the doom of the Western democracies. So stay away from political power because don't be anywhere near the well, helm of this ship when it goes down. Sure. I mean, I mean, even if you would be against tariffs, it's not you know, when another country has high tariffs on you, you raise yours. That actually creates you know a level playing field. So tariffs, when the other has tariffs, is actually free market at a limited level. You know, things are sophisticated. They're not just, you know, black and white. There's a lot of gray there. 
Uh, but I am for no tariffs if the other people were actually you know, doing that. The problem is they are tax farms basically trying to cheat uh, the other tax farms. But Ron Paul has said now is the time for him to try to get in because it is imploding. He can go in and point out what they did. If not, they may use the implosion to sell more collectivism. But I do see your point about they could then scapegoat us like they did smooth haulings. The economy was already in a depression. They got in, put tariffs in. They then blamed the depression on that when it had been the collectivist engineering uh, the whole situation from the beginning. Let's play a clip uh, from uh, NBC's Meet the Press with Tiny Tim uh, Geithner, uh, the guy who told the Chinese they're not devaluing the dollar, and they laughed at him a few years ago um, because they were informed, unlike certain people uh, here in the United States. We had a miscommunication. I thought it was queued up to this quote. I know that's a long interview. Just see if you can by the end of the show find the place where he says, quote, Meet the press. That is a very tough economy, he says, that a lot of people, it's going to feel very, very hard, harder than anything they've experienced in their lifetime now for a long time to come. But, but I mean, just that first part, I'm glad that we didn't have it queued up uh, uh, to where I wanted because that was even worse. We're, they're now calling it the Great Recession. They're admitting it never ended. Uh, so now it's not Great Depression, it's Great Recession. We're three years in to and having three quarters in a row uh, of non-growth, even with Cook numbers. I mean, and, and here they are telling us massive taxes on poor and middle class to pay the bankers who've written the tax laws where they're almost completely exempt, uh, that that's going to fix things. I mean, these guys are something else, Stefan. And who, who is taking a shred of responsibility for the complete failure of TARP and the stimulus package and all of the money that was blown and burnt and sent into the stratosphere to supposedly deal with this crisis? Now, it's like nothing ever happened that they had this huge plan that was supposed to rescue us from the recession. Now they're admitting there was a recession anyway, but we're much more in debt. Than and now they want to rape us again and rape us again. It's the same thing in Greece over and over again, and it's just never going to end. And they, they, you know what the, the dangerous thing is? And don't you just hate being right all the time? Oh, I wish I would be wrong. I because agree. You make these terrible predictions and you just want to be wrong because they're starting to use the word sacrifice. I predicted this about a year ago, that there was going to be no recovery. And when there was no recovery and things began to get worse and worse and the debt ceiling was going to be bumped up against and the entitlement programs were under threat, what they were going to start talking about, Alex, was the need for shared sacrifice. Yeah, and now, now they've course, introduced guys, a bill where we voluntarily have money taken out of our check and the inside baseball is once they totally default, they're just going to use that. Uh, here's an example. My dad was going to sign up to pay online taxes to the private Federal Reserve to the IRS uh, with Wells Fargo. And it turned out it was a Goldman Sachs waiver. In fact, it's out in my car. And the whole thing, you waive your rights. They're now a tax reporter. You, you, you allow them to take all the money out of your account and give it to the government. It's a contract where you waive all your rights in the future and allow them to share all your data. When you get a cloud computing thing with Amazon, they waive your rights and say they now own your data. I mean, these people are out of control. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, they, they're completely out of control. And now they're going to start talking about sacrifice. And sacrifice is political ease for bend over, grab your shoelaces, this ain't going to be pretty. Because well, take Lord Rothschild. That. He's got giant $300 million yachts, jet airplanes. He rented a whole giant uh, island for his party for 300 people. World leaders went there. Taxpayer paid for security. They would come across the water, grab cameras from mainstream media, erase them. And he literally is then giving speeches about not being able to take a hot bath or have a, or a, a heating in the winter because it's hurting the earth with carbon while the i mean it is such a sick joke yeah i really i have a tough time understanding how people take this at all uh, seriously but now this this talk of sacrifice when the ruling classes are backed into a corner and all of their disastrous uses of violence and deception have caught up with them then they start talking about shared sacrifice and shared sacrifice means you all better get used to a pretty damn low standard of living because the whole system is coming down and we're going to grab as much gold and treasure as we can and you're going to be left with uh, you know uh, tang uh, as your meals and that is what is going to happen oh hey uh, when i go to whole foods now for three years it's all how sexy austerity is and how it's good to be in a depression and and and, and all the trendies are like oh yeah we're imploding it's so fun uh oh. so they're now making it fun to be a poor slave 
Yeah, they're absolutely doing that kind of stuff, and it's, it's completely wretched, and we need to push back on the idea of, of sacrifice. This is not how the West was built. The West was not built on let's accept lower and less and, and more poverty and, and less access to information and less uh, of a high standard of living. That had nothing to do with how the West was built. The West was built on life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, property rights and freedom and a growth in the economy that was continual so that we could deal with things like environmental problems by, uh, by wealth, not through poverty. You know, to solve environmental problems, you need an excess of wealth so that you can install, install scrubbers, so that you can have more localized production of energy. You don't want a poverty-based reduction in your... That's right. Living. Wealth makes things cleaner. Wealth, yes. on record, makes you have less children. And, and instead, they've blocked development, making it filthy squalor. Yes, and they're going to call this sacrifice, and what they're going to do is they're going to try and make a virtue out of surrendering the last vestiges of your middle class lifestyle and say it's for the planet it's for the children it's for the future it's for the spotted owl it's for the fish in the sea it's for every this has nothing to do with it the, the only way to solve environmental depredation is through the privatization oh and here's another thing while i'm on that topic of privatization you're also going to see a massive privatization of government which is another form of tax increase because what happens is they privatize let's say they privatize the parks well before you didn't have to pay much to get into the parks because it was absorbed in your taxes now when they privatize the parks you're gonna have to pay a lot more to uh, to go into the park it's just another form of raising your taxes so they're gonna sell stuff off and they're gonna take the profits for themselves and then you're gonna have to pay the private company well it's not real privatization private. either because it's all done inside deals that's right, yeah, just as it was in Russia. And, oh, okay, last thing, so I'm in a good rant fest here. The banks have now recently been threatened with, uh, you have to pay $30 billion and we're going to wipe out any problems you had with your fraudulent mortgages. And they have almost no proof. They don't know how far this mortgage fraud goes. And I, I imagine it goes enormously far. And I bet you uh, that uh, the wisdom of Solomon could not figure out who actually owns a house in America anymore because it's been so split up and diversified and sold all over the planet. But now what they're saying is they're going to shake these banks down, the five or six major banks who defrauded the U.S. government, defrauded the customers and lied about the, at least according to the allegations, lied about the quality of these investments to investors all around the world, that they're going to let, get let off with $30 billion. People say, well, that's a lot of money. But it doesn't come out of the pockets of the people. There's 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives. Bank of America is taking houses they never even had a deed to that are paid for with people that have pure title going back decades. It is, it is in the thousands of trillions. And yeah, they're telling the big banks, government's going to guarantee all this if you put 30 billion in with the big six banks. That doesn't even come to 200, 300 billion. It, it, it isn't even near 1 trillion. And, and then, but the public hears 30 billion. That sounds big. You're absolutely right, Stefan Molyneux. Let's go to some calls. I'm skipping this network break. And I want to go five minutes into overdrives. We get to Beth, Michael, Brian, Sean, George, and others. You're on the air, uh, Beth, from Texas with Alex Jones and Stefan Molyneux. Welcome. Hi, Alex. Um, what my question is, is I'm wondering with, um, I've bought some gold and silver, and what I'm wondering is, is that um, are we ripe for confiscation or will they do it in another way, basically through taxation? Um, right now, if I sell some of the gold and silver I have, there's a 28% capital gain. Well, people do like that under I the, yeah, I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, but folks, that's why gold's really good because it's hard to track. Look, Here's the deal. People say, why should I own gold? They could take it. Well, why should I have children? They could die in a car wreck or, you know, die of cancer. God forbid they don't, but I'm not out of fear not going to live. Gold and silver aren't perfect. And yes, I believe down the road they're going to try to slap taxes on. They're going to try to, to take it. But it's better than them just taking it through inflation or taking it right out of your bank account. It's harder for them to get. Do like my my grandmother's father and my grandfather's father, both of them, different parts of Texas, didn't turn their gold in when the Fed said do it in 33. And so it comes down to the end of the day saying, I'm not doing what you tell me, crooks. And if enough of us do it, they can't enforce on us. What do you say to that, Stefan Molyneux? Well, I think that's right, and I also think that it's well worthwhile buying stuff at the moment with your fiat currency that, that can't be taken, right? So buy a bunch of food, buy some water, you know, stock up a little bit. Even if you don't think there's going to be a huge collapse, there's sure as heck going to be massive inflation in food prices over the next year. So that's a great way. I mean, they're not going to come and take cans from your basement, so you can convert your fiat currency into something you can eat, something you can use, grow a vegetable garden, do all of that kind of good stuff, unless you want to be arrested like some people are for growing vegetable gardens. But yeah, you Al can convert garden. Uh, Al-Qaeda gardens. The terrorist tomato is loose in the neighborhood. Oh, no. <laughs> run, run. Ah! <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> the vegetables are coming. Flee! She's facing 90 days in jail for a tomato plant in yeah. her yard, yeah.